architect and TV presenter, George Clark. How are you doing? Very good. You? Yeah, yeah, fine, thanks. Enjoying the show? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's absolutely packed. I know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, on the first day, especially when it's on a Friday, you think there's not going to be many numbers on the first yeah. day. Yeah. Everyone's saying that. It's, it's crazy. So, um, you're an architect. Yep. Um, do, you, do you feel that um, people perhaps maybe overlook um, the architecture and maybe structural integrity of a building and concentrate on the sofas and the cushions? Um, I wouldn't say they overlook it, I think it, it, it kind of comes down to budget really at the end of the day. Um, I think a lot of people have seen so many interior styling programs, you know, you're kind of changing rooms and those sort of, sorts of programs for years and, and kind of got seduced by, you know, cheap MGF beds and, yeah. and kind of pink cupboards and, yeah. and actually things that maybe um, might be a little bit cheesy to us, like the gimmick, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think architecture is much more about um, space and light and making those spaces work really well. But I think that's why people, I mean, you know, your kind of sounds live, that's why all these people are here. It's not just about products, it's about understanding good design, what good architecture is. Well, you mentioned that people have moved away from perhaps the gimmicky side, yeah. and we've definitely seen that in the last few years. Um, has there been any emerging trends in the, in the last few years that you can see becoming quite big for home design in the future? Uh, I think people are, are much more interested in glass and glass technology. Um, and about how they get as much natural light in their airspaces to make them feel bigger and brighter and lighter. Okay. Um, so you get a lot of people there who are doing um, you know, nice glass staircases or even yeah. glass floors, you know, structural glass yeah. floors in domestic houses where you used to see that you know, 10 years ago in commercial buildings but you never saw that in homes really. No. And so I think things like glass has been a, a big issue. I think ecology is a huge thing. You know, massive thing. A lot of people are looking at kind of photovoltaic panels and how they can have energy saving devices in their home as well, which I think is a very cool thing. Um, you've just come from a book signing, haven't you? You've got mobs there. Yeah. Um, so your book is called The it's Home called Bible. It's called George Clark's Home Bible. Yeah. It's, a, it's a book that I've always wanted to write because um, it, Kevin McLeod does kind of a lot of grand designs, new builds projects, predominantly mm. new builds, really. I mean, he does do refurbishments as well. But I've always been really passionate since a young age about how you can make ordinary houses very ordinary existing houses and something special. So whether you live in a 1950s bungalow, a 1970s house, or whether it's a 1930s or an art deco house, how you can transform those existing buildings, if you like, into something more architecturally exciting. So that's what the whole Bible's really about. So whether you live in the most ordinary, boring, bland home in Britain, it can still be transformed by reading that book and getting all the top tips. I hope. You've got your um, house in your book, haven't you? Yeah. And the stages from well, yeah, you, you've like gutted yeah, it, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, mine's, mine was, um, well firstly it was a big decision for me to put that in the book. Yeah. It's never been published before, no one's ever seen where I live. Um, but I thought if I was going to write this kind of 400 page home bible and be preaching to everybody about what they should, should live in, I think it's only right that I, I show where I live. Uh, mine's a very extreme refurbishment project. <laughs> you know, I took this kind of little 1910 house in a conservation area and the roof came off and the windows came out, the floors came out and you know, we changed absolutely yeah. everything. But the reason why we've used that at the beginning of the book is that you can, by, by understanding all the moves that we made and the process that I went through, can kind of help people take little bits from that. They don't have to do an extreme yeah. refurb like I've done, but they can take bits, maybe it's the natural light, maybe it's the flooring, maybe it's the kitchen design, maybe it's the bathroom design. And, um, and we explore that throughout the book, really, so yeah. hopefully people can learn about how to change their house and change them within it. You've just done um, a seminar on creating new space in your home. So, for people that don't have as much space as your living room, they've got a smaller space, what would be your advice to creating your room? Um, I think it's about creating a greater sense of space. So even when I've done small houses and small refurbishment projects, um, you need to make those small spaces feel bigger. So I mean, the, the obvious one, the easy one, is to kind of paint it a brighter colour. You yeah. know, if it's all dark walls and a bit miserable, paint it white, makes a massive difference. Get away from maybe your old, just the old carpet and put something else down on the floor, like a lighter timber floor, like you know, the one that's in here works really well. Um, if you get natural light in there, it makes a huge difference. So yeah. any additional windows you can put in, or maybe skylights. Skylights are brilliant. The skylights put in so much more light. You know, the, the sun's up there. Yeah. So if you've got a skylight up there, yeah. the lights come right down into the depth and heart of the space. Yeah. And, and those three things are normal, completely transform that very ordinary piece of architecture. I can see you're you're very passionate about what you do, and um, well, you've been rushed off your feet all day. So it's um, nice to sit down. That's what you're <laughs> well, I was going to say we'd stop the interview there, but if you want to sit down, I'm not sleep. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for your time, um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. I will do. If it stays like this, it's busy. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.